During pregnancy, having that 20-week anatomy ultrasound to look at all the parts of your baby from head to toe is so important. Can you imagine, or maybe you have had this happen already, that you get told there may be something going on with the fetal kidney or fetal kidneys? And they throw out this term, or you read this term in your ultrasound report called pyelectasis, which when you look at it, it's not easy to spell. It's super confusing when you're like, what is pyelectasis? What part of the fetal body is that talking about? And they actually have not used that term as much lately. And we use something called urinary tract dilation. So since it's something that can pop up on ultrasounds a good bit, and it's a topic that is a soft marker, which means it does carry an association with Down syndrome. It can cause a lot of anxiety in individuals and also bring about a lot of questions. So today we're gonna to talk about the soft marker called urinary tract dilation. Welcome to the Dr. Lexi Show where I take pregnancy topics and break them down into simple terms to help you advocate for yourself and your pregnancy. I'm Dr. Lexi, a board-certified OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist, which just means a high-risk pregnancy doctor. And today we're talking about urinary tract dilation. Before we get started, I always like to point out helpful downloads that you can check out. And since this is a soft marker, meaning it has an association with Down syndrome, I have separate videos that really dive into number one, what is a soft marker? And you can find that download at drlexihill.com backslash soft markers as an S there at the end. And then I have another video talking about Down syndrome screening and what your choices are when you're looking at a blood test to screen for the risk of Down syndrome during a pregnancy. That can be found at drlexihill.com backslash Down syndrome. If you don't remember those, they're gonna be linked below as well. And also, if you'd like, you can just go to the website, drlexihill.com. The very top on the toolbar, you'll see a drop-down box. That drop-down box will be titled Free Downloads. Just go there and you can check out all of the downloads. These are the ones that are the most important for watching something about a soft marker. Those are Down syndrome and soft markers. So you'll be able to find those at drlexihill.com underneath the drop-down for free downloads. Also, so you know, I have created a new download for this video that's at drlexihill.com backslash UTD. That's all in lower case letters there. It is case sensitive. If for some reason it won't work that way, again, just go to the website and look at the drop down under free downloads. So let's begin and start to expand our knowledge surrounding the topic of this isolated soft marker, which is called urinary tract dilation. The first thing we need to do when we're talking about a soft marker is really understanding what is the definition of a soft marker. So you can see on the screen if you're watching and if you're not, this is just audio, there are three main things that we wanna think about. Number one, it means it is isolated. And then that goes into number two, there are no issues with growth for the fetus. And then that goes into the third thing, no structural abnormalities. So those are the three main things to think about when you have an isolated soft marker, meaning it's just by itself. No other findings are seen on the ultrasound. Second thing about a soft marker, this is something that is typically found during that anatomy ultrasound. That typically occurs between the 18th and the 20th week of the pregnancy. The third thing to know about any soft marker is that they have an association with the chromosomal abnormality. This soft marker, urinary tract dilation, in particular has an association with trisomy 21 which is also known as Down syndrome. The association for this soft marker is very, very low. If we wanna think of what is a definition for urinary tract dilation, what I like to say is this is when measuring the area where the tube is carrying urine that leaves the fetal kidney, that's going down to the fetal bladder, the measurement at that level when the tube leaves the kidney, if that measurement is at or above four millimeters in width that is considered urinary tract dilation. Another thing to know about this, the region that we're measuring, right where that tube, which we call the ureter, right where it leaves the kidney, that region is called the renal pelvis. And kind of fun fact, you may see urinary tract dilation referred to as pyelectasis or pelviectasis, which means dilation of the pelvic region of the kidney. And finally, this is a really important thing to know about urinary tract dilation. It's seen in approximately up to 2% of fetuses at this crucial time for the anatomy ultrasound. Remember that 18th to 20th week. And most always, 
if it is seen, it is considered transient, meaning that when follow-up occurs to look at the kidneys again, we no longer see any urinary tract dilation. All right, so now that we know the definitions behind what urinary tract dilation is, let's take a look at a picture. If you're listening to this and not able to see it, I encourage you to go to the YouTube channel so that you can see some of these images. So what we're looking at now is a transverse view through the fetal kidneys. And I like to explain a transverse view as if we had a loaf of bread in front of us. And now we've taken one slice of that bread and we've laid it down and we're looking down at this piece of bread so we can see the inside portion, not the crust of the bread. We're looking on the inside, right? On that one piece, that one slice. So that's what we're looking at when I say a transverse view through the fetal abdomen so we can see these fetal kidneys. In the picture that we're showing here, you can see there are two C-shaped regions. The C-shaped regions, that's actually the kidney tissue. And what you see in the middle is a little black area. And what's important to know is that anything that is black on an ultrasound is fluid. So it's normal for the renal pelvis or the region where the tube, the ureter, leaves the kidney, for that region right there that we measured to have black right there. So we know it's clear fluid. That is then where we measure the renal pelvis to see if we have urinary tract dilation. So the next picture, if you're able to see it, again, you can go over to the YouTube channel. Sorry, I can't put it on the audio platforms and everything. You can see here that we have measurements and we call these calipers in the world of ultrasound. And we have two different measurements, one on the left kidney and one on the right kidney. In this transverse view of the fetal abdomen, right at the level of those kidneys. And here we can see those measurements. No numbers are listed there, but I'll just tell you, they both ended up being less than four millimeters. And again, if that measurement is equal to or greater than four millimeters at this gestational age, we would call this urinary tract dilation. So now I have one more picture. Sorry for those who are listening on audio. This picture here shows a right kidney and a left kidney. The left kidney is normal. I can see some kidney tissue there and no measurement is there, but you can see it's nice and thin, okay? That region of where that tube is leaving, that renal pelvis measures normal, okay? It's nice and thin, nice and thin right there. This other kidney, you can see the C shape that we kind of see for kidney tissue, and then the black in the middle, which is where we know the fluid is, where that urine's being made and leading the kidney, it's really, really wide. And we were able to put those calipers here and measure from the inside to the inside of this region. And we notice, I don't have the numbers up here for you, but that area is definitely greater than four millimeters in width. So that would be urinary tract dilation. So if that was the only finding noted, we would say this is isolated, unilateral, one-sided, right, because it's on the right kidney, urinary tract dilation. All right, so I know that some people are listening to this and not watching, but for those watching, I'm gonna show you something. And for those listening, go to the YouTube and watch this. This is my personal drawing. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> okay, so now I need a pen. This is my drawing of two kidneys here. These are the tubes that go down. We call those ureters, this is the bladder, and then this is the urethra. So this right here is the measurement that we're looking at, okay? Roughly, this is kind of like my down and dirty way to look at it. And I'm gonna take that away and put this one up because this yellow measurement here, basically, I'm trying to show correlates with what the ultrasound looks like, which is the yellow marks you can see there. So see the yellow there? Let's see the yellow there. Okay, now look at the pink. This one's bigger, right? So this one would probably measure normal, which is below four millimeters. This one would measure larger, which is at or beyond four millimeters in measurement. Now, if you're a sonographer, you're going, that's not actually the AP diameter. That's the, the long and not the anterior to posterior. This is just for visual representation. So bear with me. But I wanted to show that this, this right here is called the renal pelvis. So when we're talking about the indention of the C shape, this is the region of the kidney we're talking about. So we talk about like kidney beans, right? That little indention part of the kidney bean. This is the tube that leaves and see how nice and straight that is. We typically cannot see a ureter if it's nice and healthy on a fetus. I drew this one a bit more chunky because as I mentioned throughout discussing urinary tract dilation, one of the things we have to think about is the fact that 
there could be something going on somewhere from this pelvis portion all the way down here. So there could be a stricture here. It could be narrowed. This part could be narrowed. See that I drew this little kink in there? It could be kinked or coiled. So there are things along the path of this tube, this ureter, that could be coiled, turned, kinked, or even down here at the urethra. So just to know that this soft marker is not just something to think about being associated with Down syndrome, but also needing to make sure that a full anatomy is performed to look at all the structures of the baby, but particularly paying attention to all the parts of the urinary tract system. When we talk about the urinary tract system, we want all of these things to be evaluated on ultrasound. The kidney itself, where the tube leaves the kidney and goes down to the bladder, and then this tube is called the ureter, the bladder itself, and then the tube that leaves the bladder, which is called the urethra. So now we have this question of how does having isolated urinary tract dilation change the risk of Down syndrome? Answer to that is it depends. So let's go through mainly the two scenarios we have here. So scenario number one, let's say you have already had a blood test that returned low risk when being screened for Down syndrome, whatever type of blood test you had performed at your OB office, okay? And that came back low risk. Well, look at this here. If we have an isolated soft marker on ultrasound, right around that 20 week mark, go toward the left there where we have that nice yellow circle. This is a mild soft marker. And when I say mild, the association with Down syndrome is considered mild. So then we would say, okay, with this scenario one, if I have had any prior blood test that was low risk for my risks of Down syndrome, no further workup for Down syndrome is recommended or necessary. Now remember, this is when there's an isolated soft marker, only thing noted on ultrasound. Those scenarios change if we're looking at other things, but recall, Scenario one is for an isolated finding of urinary tract dilation. So the blood testing that you can have done, there are various types, and that can all be found in my separate video on talking about Down syndrome screening. But I kind of want you to be aware that if your blood test that you had performed was called cell-free DNA screening, sometimes they call it non-invasive prenatal testing. There are different brands for this test. They can oftentimes generally quote you if that test returned low risk, that you have less than a one in 50,000 chance of this pregnancy being affected by Down syndrome. So if you've had a blood test, there are different types, talk to your provider about the type you had and ask for counseling if you need more information. Now let's look at scenario two. So now we have, again, this isolated soft marker that we know here has a mild association with Down syndrome. In this scenario, we have had no blood testing. So if no prior blood test has been performed, discuss your options for cell-free DNA testing, which is also called non-invasive prenatal testing. Now, there are other types of tests that you can have performed. This one is considered to have the best detection rate for Down syndrome. If you don't have access to this type or your OB office doesn't offer it, talk to them about the other types that are available as well. Again, if any questions on that, check out the other video on Down syndrome screening to help educate yourself on the different types of serum testing or blood tests that you can have performed to screen for your risks of Down syndrome. So let's say we were in scenario two where you had not had yet any blood testing performed. You may be thinking, okay, well, if I don't have any blood testing and I've said that this finding is considered mildly associated with Down syndrome, well, how mildly is it associated? So let's actually work through that a little bit. So what we do with that then, specifically for urinary tract dilation, when we say how associated, we say mild. And then the question is, well, how exactly associated is it? The likelihood ratio is 1.5. And instead of going into statistics right here, I'm gonna give you examples because the numbers kind of, kind of tell it all themselves, honestly. On the screen here, we have when an ultrasound shows an isolated finding of urinary tract dilation, and you have not yet had any blood testing for Down syndrome screening that has been performed. This gives examples of when you have an age-based risk, then, what happens after we have this ultrasound finding of isolated urinary tract dilation? So these are just examples here. If you have an age that's 20, you walked into the door for this anatomy ultrasound. Again, we're talking right around 20 weeks. And your risk of Down syndrome would be quoted as approximately 1 in 1,250. This finding of an isolated soft marker would then increase your risk 
of having this child affected by trisomy 21 or Down syndrome to approximately one in 833. So we went as at age of 20 from a risk of Down syndrome of 0.08 to now 0.12%. So 0.08% and then an increase to 0.12%. So when I counsel patients, I oftentimes say, this finding took you from less than 1% to still less than 1%. And that actually is applicable for individuals age 20 to 25, 25 to 30, 30 to 35. The thing that changes when we get above the age of 35 and really approach 40 is that the age-based risk of Down syndrome that we quote individuals starts at approximately one in 86. And that right there alone is a chance or a percent risk of having a child with Down syndrome of about 1.2%. So now if we take that number and we have a likelihood ratio that's increasing our risk of 1.5, we do the math behind that, and then someone who's 40 years of age came in the door with a risk of 1 in 86, which is 1.2% roughly, and leaves if they have isolated urinary tract dilation with a risk of 1 in 57, and that is right at 1.75%. So you can see how the age of an individual can change the information on how we quote them for risks of having a child affected by Down syndrome, given the finding of isolated urinary tract dilation in the event that they have not yet had any blood testing performed. Now let's work on developing some skills. If you are in the situation where you have the finding of isolated urinary tract dilation on your anatomy ultrasound. This is the handout I mentioned before, and this is one found at drlexihill.com backslash soft markers. And you can also, again, go to the website and find it under the free downloads. But I wanna turn your attention to the purple box there, which is the developing skills. And I just wanna make sure that we are able to begin the conversation by asking the right questions. So can we discuss what this ultrasound finding means? That's a nice way to ask that question so that you can really begin the conversation. Second, ask about blood tests to screen for Down syndrome. You may have had that blood test done already and not known it, so ask for clarification. And then finally, inquire if there's any follow-up needed. And this is one of the soft markers that is recommended to have follow-up. So not only am I trying to arm you with these questions, I got a handout for you too, of course I do. This next handout coming up is not only going to be arming you with the right questions, but the way in which to ask them and you knowing what is recommended for your follow-up. This handout can be found at drlexihill.com backslash UTD, all in lowercase letters, or you can go to the website, find it under free downloads. So this handout will work on helping you to expand your knowledge on what we've talked about already. That's the blue section. So item number one there, when an ultrasound shows an isolated finding, meaning remember, it's the only finding on ultrasound. It's called urinary tract dilation, which we previously called pyelectasis or pelviectasis. This is a soft marker for a chromosomal abnormality called trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome. Thing number two, of the soft markers, this is very low on the list for the risk of Down syndrome. Thing number three, when someone has had a screening test that returned low risk, no other screening test is recommended to evaluate for trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome. And recall, this is when the finding of the soft marker is isolated because that's the definition of a soft marker. Thing number four here. So if urinary tract dilation is noted on an ultrasound, this is one of the soft markers that is recommended to have follow-up, typically within the early portion of the third trimester. And don't forget item number five here. Follow-up ultrasound is recommended if you have the finding of isolated urinary tract dilation on your anatomy ultrasound. For developing skills in this purple portion, you will see as the patient, what are some things that you need to know? It's important to know if you had any blood test that was done to screen for the risk of Down syndrome and also to know the results of that. And also ask for genetic consultation if you want more information about this specific soft marker. Next, you'll see questions to ask your provider. Things like, did I have a blood test performed called cell-free DNA screening? Can we review the results of any blood test I had performed that was part of my screening for Down syndrome? Also, anyone can have invasive testing, which at this gestational age would be with an amniocentesis across the board, regardless of any finding on ultrasound. Now, this is not an ultrasound finding that prompts us to encourage 
necessarily an amniocentesis, but ask your provider if they can talk to you about an amniocentesis at any point in the pregnancy if you are interested. And then finally, do not forget that census is a soft marker that is recommended to have a follow-up ultrasound. Be sure to ask your provider when and where that ultrasound will be performed. Finally, I wanna end on how this can help to have an impact on you and your pregnancy. I am hopeful that this video helps you to understand the basics of what urinary tract dilation is, understanding the definitions behind a soft marker, linking you to helpful videos and other places and downloads, and then ultimately to really allow you to understand what it is hopefully decrease some of your fears and worries during the pregnancy, and really advocate for yourself with these handouts and videos when you go to see your provider to help bridge that gap of communication between patients and providers. I'm Dr. Lexi, thanks for tuning in, and as always, wishing you a happy and healthy pregnancy.